Hi guys, I'm just trying to get a good spot where there's no glare while we wait for Annie. Thank you guys all for coming on today. And I hope you are all well. I don't think I've ever been any more grateful than I am now for gallery lighting. It's so much more perfect. So here's Annie. Hi, Annie. Hi, can you hear me okay? I can hear you and I can see you perfectly. Am I coming in okay? Yeah, perfect. Good, good, it's good to see you. You look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, I wish I could see you. You don't wanna see me? <laughs> <laughs> I just worked out, so I'm not in the best um, condition to be seen, but I'm going to maybe come on for a little bit with these um, in the future, I think, because it's not where you guys get all, you know, done up and I get the highs. So, so yeah, so for everyone who's tuned in, um, we have Annie Stegerard here today. Um, she's going to be talking with us about her work, um, in particular, um, this piece, Amethia the series that the work came from, as well as anything and everything that you guys may throw our way. So feel free to send us questions as we talk about art and more. And we look forward to hearing with you and thank you for joining us. And so I've been a big fan of Annie's work for a very long time. Um, I have a couple pieces of hers in my own collection and it's always an absolute dream to have her work on exhibit at the gallery. This is Amethia, and she's one of the only paintings that we have left. Um, she's part of Annie's Daughter of Nera series. And Annie, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to know more about why you tackled this mythological concept, um, who this goddess is, and who the daughters of Nera are as well. Absolutely. So um, in Greco-Roman mythology, the Nereids were said to be beautiful maidens with melodious voices who lived in the Aegean Sea. Um, with their father, Nereus, and they were seen, unlike mermaids, they were seen actually as benevolent figures who represented the different characteristics of the sea, and they actually were um, known to help sailors instead of, um, like with mermaids, dragging them down to the bottom. Um, but they represented the different characteristics of the sea, so you have some that are, um, that represent the foamy waves or the currents. Um, Amathia that you're showing here, she was actually, um, I think she was seen as a nurturer of creatures from the sea and also somebody who guided people away from the storms. And so I, for my painting here, I wanted to show her as a figure guiding these little dolphins away. And these are actually um, striped dolphins that are native to the Aegean Sea. Ah, so um, you geographically yeah. select those dolphins purposely. Yes. That's awesome that I didn't know. And I, I find that your work often works either with the sea or the land. And I know that you grew up with a forest as well as some body of water behind your family home. Yes, yes. <laughs> so um, the, I actually did a book a few years ago called The, um, the Daughters of Oceanus, which were, it was focusing mainly on freshwater um, mermaids. And so this recent collection, The Daughters of Marys are all from the sea. And it's, um, they're from a book that I'm working on currently. And I can show you guys a little sneak peek of, I can't show the cover, it's not finished yet, but I can show you a couple of the interior illustrations. But I've been working on this for a while now. Um, and this is the book I actually had hoped to have finished when I did the show with you. But it's looking like I'll have it in May. It's a huge project, and it gives us something to look forward to, and that's soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're all so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. You haven't painted yeah, them all yet, right? Pardon? You haven't painted them all yet? I have not. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and there are 50 in total. Oh, wow. Is it a plan in the future to paint the rest of them? Um, as many as I can, I would like to. 
And so do you find that your, your longing for the sea as well as the woodland settings come from all the time you spent as a child playing in these environments? Absolutely. And I'm really I'm inspired a lot by mythology. And um, for me, the easiest way to explore different themes in literature is through art. Um, so I've always been drawn to the mystery of the unknown. And there's still so many secrets hiding in the depths of the sea. And um, I think that's why I'm drawn to those themes. Absolutely. So many little um, microcosms of worlds that, you know, are unbeknownst to us. And as, you know, children, there's so much mystery and intrigue and our imaginations just go crazy. And so I think your work really harks back to that and, and reminds us to take note and, and take light in these small little worlds and lose ourselves in them too. <laughs> and so oftentimes as well, your work pulls inspiration from historical references um, like the Rococo period, as well as the Pre-Raphaelites. Are those artists um, in those periods very important to you? Yes, I love the palettes that they have. I love the dreamy atmospheres. Um, definitely, I take a huge inspiration from anything 18th century. Absolutely. I could totally see that. And those are some of my favorite periods, which I think create a stronger connection to your work. And I already am very strongly connected with it. So I think it's a beautiful period to pull inspiration from. And so oh, some questions have popped up. These are oil paintings. And somebody asked, how much time does it take for you to paint each one? Um, that's so hard to say. I work on a lot of layers. And so I like to say just, I like to put in about 30 layers per painting. So however long that takes. Um, I also work on several paintings at, at the same time. Um, so I might be working on five or six paintings and just rotate between them as they're drying. So it's hard to say exactly a time frame or how many hours. It's really just measured in layers for me. Absolutely. And as we've discussed on here in the past with the artists, working in, on a couple paintings at once allows you really to kind of take a step back and go back into works that you've immersed yourself in so much to look at them with a fresh perspective. So it's so hard when that question's asked of you guys because you tend to be working on so many things at once. And let me see, another question about technique. How do you go about starting a painting? Do you sketch it first? Yes, um, and that's what these sketchbooks are that I keep. It's all the preliminary work that goes into um, to just the beginning stages before I start, I start painting. The um, paintings themselves, it changes. I believe for this collection, I worked in a lot of underpaintings um, and also working directly in color. I recently moved to working on black panel, which I've really, really enjoyed. Um, but I wouldn't say that I'm going to continue doing that exclusively. I'll probably go back to underpainting. So I'd, I'd like to mix things up just to keep it fresh. Absolutely. And I'm sure you find that you learn quite a bit each time you do something different. Absolutely. And so a couple more technical questions came up. Um, someone has a question about skin tones. Any advice on those? Um, when you work in glazing, which is what I do, it's really, really, um, I like to focus more on volume and shading and lighting first, and then glazing the color on top. So with the skin tones, I mean, it could be open to anything. If I decided I wanted this scene, for instance, to be a nighttime scene, I would just have to glaze blue over the top or um, just any kind of color that would help it work with the atmosphere, if that makes sense. Um, Another thing I could say is you don't have to worry about spending a lot of money on oil paints for skin tones. You can um, get all the colors that you could, you could ever want for skin tones just in the primary colors. Uh, I have a couple, couple tutorials like that on my Patreon, um, just how to mix every skin tone using just three colors. I think that's great advice, and you guys should check it out. Annie and her husband, Justin, do a number of workshops um, and wonderful videos that are extremely helpful for young and emerging middle career artists, well, everyone, because we can all learn and do better. So next question, do you use references for the different poses? Yes, yeah, I have a few different models that I like to work with. Um, I think it always helps push your work if you can have something rooted in, in real life to, to paint from. Even if you're painting things from your imagination, it's nice to have something there that you can study for lighting and anatomy. Um, I really recommend doing that. Next question. What is your favorite animal to draw? I adore your dragons. 
I, I remember we're painting the dragons, um, toads and unicorns, probably. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the, the dragons and the to toads are some of my favorites as well. <laughs> and your sea serpents, actually. Your sea serpents are incredible because oh. they have that bit of masculine energy and your work is very delicate and feminine. And I think it poses a really like fierce contrast. It gives it this kind of like different narrative and I, I think they're awesome. But any animal you've ever done, I think everyone has loved. Aww. <laughs> so, let's see, another question. Why do you paint what you paint? Why the magical world? Um, that's a really hard one, I guess. I want to paint the things that I love, and these are just, you know, themes, and it's just imagery that, that speaks to me. And I think it speaks to so many of us because it has a balance between adulthood as well as our own childhoods. So we can relate on so many different levels. And as you intermingle these stories of the past, um, these characters, these deities, they still today are a part of our, our you know, emotional infrastructure. We grow up learning about them in school and we find ourselves as adults oftentimes getting more intrigued by their stories. And so the stories themselves are quite universal as they do withstand the test of time and teach us things still today. So I, I think that all the ingredients, you know, in your work and in many of the artists that we work with work are, are quite universal and withstand the test of time. And as an artist, I think that's so important. Let's see. Um, what type of varnish do you use? Oh, I, I think that Gamblin makes it. I'm never going to remember the name of it, but um, you can actually, I believe it's Gamblin. See, I make Justin do all my varnishing. <laughs> He's the one that's in charge of that part. <laughs> They're always so immaculate. I mean, hopefully you guys can see how smooth and placid the surface is. I mean, it looks like still water or glass, even though you have the tumultuous waves moving around with the dolphins going in and out. And they have this really beautiful effect. And it, it really, I think, enhances the luminosity of, of the way that Annie works with her magic and her levels of kind of light and you know, the, the ethereal quality. And let's see over here. This garment, there, there's such a brilliance there that the varnish really, I think, enhances. So I, I think you guys do a great job with your, your varnish selection. So thank Justin for us too. <laughs> I will. Next question. Uh, would you like to paint the Taj Mahal? <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be a little intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of architecture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see, another question. We've, good, guys. Thank you for all these questions. They're really great. Um, the next question is, what are your main sources of inspiration or favorite artists? Oh, gosh. Um, we mentioned already the 18th century. Um, anything, the Rococo period. Um, I love Bouguereau. Um, as far as some contemporary artists, I'm very inspired by KY Craft, um, Brian Froud. Uh, that's what I, off the top of my head, that's what's coming to me right now. Yeah, they're awesome artists. You guys should check them out as well if you don't know about them. I'm sure you'll like them if you like Annie's work. Um, do you work on panels? It looks so smooth. Yes, I used to work on canvas, but I find that it's really hard to do the glazing technique that I like um, on canvas because the paint seems to settle in the weave. Um, so I work... Currently, I work exclusively on panel. I, I actually like to prime and sand it several times before painting, just so I have a completely smooth surface, um, which really, really helps as I build those layers. I don't know how you find the time. I mean, you are so prolific with the works that you create, and they're so detailed. And you have two young boys at home, too. So it's just amazing that you're able to do all that and, and come out with these you know, immaculate pieces. So. That's awesome. I didn't realize that you were a bit more involved in the creation of the panel, too. Oh. There's so much. <laughs> yeah, sometimes even with the wood panel, you'll have the wood grain in there, and even that will interfere with the glazing. That's right. So, and you want that smooth effect that you guys can really see here, and that's how she does it. So another question popped up about um, the time it takes to finish a piece. Um, we addressed that, but really quickly, if you don't mind one more time for this person. Yeah, um, I, I like to work in layers, and so it, it's really just however long it takes to get 30 layers finished. And I do like the paint to be completely dry in between each layer, so um, best case scenario, it would be 30 days if I worked on the piece every single day. 
Um, but during that time, I like to work on other paintings too. So I kind of rotate between them. So at the end of, a, um, of the month, I might have five paintings completed. And so next question, where does your inspiration come from for the garments? Are there any designers today that inspire you? You know, a lot of uh, the clothing is also historical. I find that you can go to different museums and they'll have a huge collection and just an online database of um, high resolution photographs of um, different period pieces. Uh, it's really, really helpful. I have a, an entire collection on my computer just of different inspiration for clothing. That's amazing. I didn't realize that you can access that so avail so readily available. Mm -hmm. Don't give away too many secrets, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone asked if it's gambar varnish, but I think um, we weren't sure what varnish I it was. I think, you know what, actually, I think it is gambar. Is it gambar? That's great. Mm -hmm. Then there you guys go. Um, let's see. You are getting a ton of beautiful comments from everyone, so thank you all for sending those over. Um, what wood is used was our next question. Um, it's A lot of times it's birch panel. Um, but again, uh, birch panel, it's a very, very heavy wood grain. And so uh, even if you get it already sanded, I recommend priming it and sanding it again before you start painting on it. Okay. And thank you for that, Annie. So mm -hmm. let's see. Someone said they're writing a book and they're wondering if you'd consider doing cover art. Is that one of the things you consider doing one day? Um, yes, but I'm actually just totally booked up for the next few years with commissions, and so I'm not taking any work right now. Um, but it is something that I would like to do in the future once, once things settle down a bit. And you've done some artwork for books in the past, as well as currently, too, I'm sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so one of those is, I think, the Collector's Consortium, which Annie's been doing oh, wonderful yeah. chimeric <laughs> animals and mythological um, creatures for. And I worked with Easton Press on the Phantom of the Opera, an uh, illustrated version of that. And that's a beautiful series for you guys to check out also when you have the time. Um, let's see, another question. Did you study art in school or is this natural talent that you've simply nurtured and worked at on your own? Um, I did go to school for art. Unfortunately, it wasn't for painting, it was for video games. But I have always just painted. Um, my great-grandparents painted and my grandparents painted. And so it's just something that I've always done. I think the, the grandparent influence is so important because growing up, they're always kind of that, that breath of fresh air in the family. And they share so much with you from such a different perspective as the generation, generational gap, I think, is quite significant. Um, my grandparents also, my grandmother, she was an artist or she is an artist, I should say. And so that heavily inspired my love and, and my attraction to the visual arts. So it's wonderful to be able to share that with each other. So let's see, mm -hmm. what oil brand do you use? Um, I am not brand loyal, so I have a whole bunch. I really like Old Holland. I like Charvin. Um, I recently gotten into Vasari that I really like because um, their their paints are really pigmented. Not uh, for me, they're not good for glazing, but they're good for getting the first uh, base down. Um, I think that uh, Gamblin makes good oil paints, um, but I, I rotate between those. And I think that for all artists, it's good to experiment to find what works best for you. And as you change and evolve too, that may as well. So that constant experimentation is wonderful. Um, do yeah. you paint when the idea comes or do you plan a series and stick to it? Both, both. It depends if I have a deadline coming up or, um, if I'm doing something for a gallery show, um, even when I don't have a show or a convention, I like to come up with little projects just to keep myself busy um, and little little collections to work on. And how do you promote your work at the start? How do I come up with my work? How do you, uh, how do you promote your work? So I guess at the start of your career or maybe just in general? Um, I think that social media is obviously really, really good. Um, just when you're first getting out there, I would just say post everywhere as much as you can. Uh, don't feel like your work has to be a certain level in order to post it. I think that building an audience, you know, right at the get-go is very, very, very important if you're wanting to do this as a career because you're really having to, um, as an artist, you're having to handle the business side of it as, as well as creating everything. And it's just, um, yeah, I guess the, the best thing I could say is just post your work everywhere. 
Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's good to note that you never know who might be looking or coming across your work. And even if an opportunity hasn't presented itself, people are always watching. And if they're connecting with your work or seeing that potential, they will reach out when the time is right. And as Annie said, that's why it's also important to keep putting your work out there. And we have an incredible tool to do so with it. So, so another question. I know literature influences my art a lot of times. Do you have any favorite stories or fairy tales that have inspired you? Oh my goodness. Um, gosh, there are so many. I mean, all of the folklore, the um, Grimm's fairy tales, uh, like I mentioned before, mythology, Greek mythology, uh, Norse mythology as well. Um, I, I think that I'm always coming across more stories, especially there's so many public domain stories right now that uh, are available for illustration. Um, yeah, yeah, all of those, I guess. And do you share those stories with your boys and how do they like them? I do, and they, they love them. Oh, <laughs> they that's so really, awesome. Like, they're the age now, they love to be read to, which is wonderful. Oh, good. <laughs> um, another question, what do you like better, lizards or toads? Oh, that's really hard. <laughs> probably, probably toads. Yeah, you see more toads, I think, in your work, but you never know. Um, these questions are all really good, guys. Thank you for sending them along. Um, have you ever tried maybe animating or a different kind of art style? Yeah, um, I mentioned earlier that I uh, went to school for video games. So a long time ago, when I was just starting, I worked for a video game studio. So I was not um, doing the stuff that you see here. I was painting spaceships and guns and vehicles and it was very very different from what I do now and I am very grateful that I can do the things that I love instead of instead of those things. I mean I think that it, it followed through with your work because your your landscapes and, and your females always have a sense of motion to them. There's always a rhythm that the work is following and I think that it does represent perhaps that animation background that you spent so much time studying. Mm-hmm. Let's see, have you ever tried, oh no, I, sorry, that only did. Are there any new mediums that you're considering experimenting with? Um, well, the, the latest one I think I mentioned was using the black gesso on my panels. Instead of priming with white, I'm priming with uh, gesso that golden makes, so it's pigmented black, and I, I'm in love with it. Um, I'm always interested in what Golden is doing with their open acrylics. I really, really like their, their products. Um, oils are just the medium I love the most, but um, the close second would probably be Golden's open acrylics. Um, I've thought about paint, trying to paint on aluminum. I've seen a lot of people doing recently. It looks really, really cool. Um, and I want to try doing some gold leafing as well. Oh, wow. I, I look forward to all of that. Um, do you listen to music when you paint? And if so, what is your favorite to listen to? Oh, mostly I listen to podcasts or just, um, I mean, honestly, I listen to The Office on, <laughs> on repeat. Like, just I'll finish it and I'll start it over again. And it's the best thing to paint to too. Paint because I don't have to look at it because I've seen it so many times already. But those jokes still stick because you know them and you know the story behind them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, let's see. And someone's asking, are you in your studio? That window view is awesome. Yes, this is my studio. Um, uh, it has great, great natural light, which was really important to me. I actually had this built onto the back of my house as an addition when the boys were born, just so I, I, had, I had my own space um, for creating and to also keep paints away from the kids and the animals. Absolutely. And Justin works with you in your studio as well, or does he have his own space? We actually have three different spaces. Um, this is where we do the oil painting, and then we have a space for uh, video editing, a computer, and watercolor. And that's where Justin is most of the time. And then we have another room that was mainly for shipping, which um, thankfully that's moving out of my house, and we have a third party handling that now. That's great. Um, that's I, I think it, it keeps things fresh when you have different locations that you can move your work. So when I'm tired of working in here, I can go into a different room to do drawings. I think that's great. And it's wonderful, too, that you both are artists and you're able to help each other. Oh, yeah. Provide that, that insight and feedback that as most artists are, you know, isolated in their studios for so long, it's a bit hard to get sometimes. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so let's see. Someone asked, um, I'm not, well, me meaning Haven, I'm not asking the questions. I'm just reading them off of the chat that you guys are contributing to. And this is Annie's, Annie's painting in her frame. And it's the one piece that we have available through the gallery. Let's see. Um, what conventions do you participate in most is the next question. Um, I, I really like going to the LuxCon, uh, Spectrum, and Dragon Con. I think those are, those are the three main shows that I go to. I really cut back on how many conventions I go to in a year just because it um, really impacts how much work I'm able to finish. Uh, so I, I just limit it to those, those three main ones. And let's see, were you always a painter? Did you start young? Uh, I, I would probably say so. I definitely drew more when I was younger than, more so than painting. Um, but I've always been involved in art in some way or another ever since I was a kid. And next question, what is glazing and or processes in how it works in an oil painting? So glazing, when I, when I talk about glazing, I'm referring to adding pigment over a dry painting. And so if I'm working on something, um, I'll wait for the, the entire painting to dry, and then I'll, I'll mix a very, very small amount of walnut oil or walnut oil alkyd into the paint just to thin it just so, just a little tiny bit. If you use too much, you'll, you'll find that you'll get trouble with like beating up and everything. Um, but I'll just do thin washes of color and kind of build up my painting that way. And it, it gives you in the end a very, um, it, it's always hard to, to see on the computer, but in real life, it gives you an almost three-dimensional look where you can actually see all, all of the different layers and how they build upon each other. I think that's really, especially with, with your fabrics and this kind of magic, this, this dust or this star um, cluster, you really have that ethereal quality that I think is one of the most beautiful and also recognizable elements of your work. I mean, there's just such a, a gossamer effect in the way that you paint. And I'm not a painter, but I'm based off of what you said, guessing that using those mediums really helps you achieve that. Absolutely. Hopefully you guys can see. Um, somebody asked, are you afraid of your work getting stolen by posting it everywhere? No. And um, I actually don't think that you should be. Um, the reality is, is that people are going to be taking your, your paintings, they're going to be reposting it. But if you're the type of person that puts like a huge watermark across your work, you're only hurting yourself because it's going to be, um, people are going to be less likely to share it. And also it's something that art directors don't really like to see either. And so it's just one of those, it's just one of those things that um, it's annoying, but I don't think it should hold you back from posting. Just always be careful about the resolution of the images that you put on the internet, because if it's low enough, people can't steal it and reproduce it in ways that they shouldn't. Um, it's something that you should really be quite careful about. And your work will be posted without your name um, sometimes, but I've seen so many artist fans and galleries all comment saying, hey, tag the artist, and then they tag the artist. So I think it eventually comes back around and the artists always find out and credit usually is given. Um, so someone asked about duration of painting. Um, if you guys want to check back later, we answered that twice about how long it takes. So I'm sorry. I just want to get through a couple more questions. Um, so let's see, what inspires you? We addressed that to you. Sorry, guys. Um, how did you develop your art style? Did you know you were going for a Renaissance-like sort of style? Um, I think the style is such a hard thing because it's something that's always evolving. And uh, it makes me happy when people say that they can recognize my work. Um, but it's one of those things where um, it's just, I wouldn't say that like I, I found my style. It's something that I'm always working on and always trying to improve. I do think you have a penchant for redheads, though, because they do pervade your work <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> I do a lot of um, dark backgrounds, and I use a lot of greens and blues, and the red stands out so nice against backgrounds like that. <laughs> it, it certainly does. When we were speaking with Howard Lyon the other day, he said that he seems to favor redheads. His wife's a redhead, and he tends to lean towards more models with that hair color. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, but it makes perfect sense. And I think you said something similar about the way that the color works with the, the complexion of the person, but also the backgrounds and the stories. Let's see. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any references for your paintings? Um, we spoke about that too. I'm sorry. Um, we're going to move on. 
How is priming with black different? How does it affect your overall art? Um, well, I, I think I tend to work with dark backgrounds. As you can see in the, this painting here, it's a dark background with a figure coming forward and the figure is almost spotless. And before I was working with light backgrounds and I was constantly having to push back and move forward. And starting with a black background and then, then pulling everything forward, it saves me so much time. I, I, I think it just, it's not something that would work for everybody, but um, if you're the, a painter that works with really dark backgrounds, um, I think it's something to try for sure. Absolutely. Um, next question. Do you have any advice on painting um, the elderly, people with wrinkles, like the ones you did years ago? <laughs> that, um, that painting was actually based on my grandpa. And oh. he loved being photographed, and he was like the best model ever. I, I actually have a million paintings that I've done of my grandfather over the years. Um, but again, I guess the, the best thing I would say is have a, a really good reference or something that you can look at, or even somebody that you know that wouldn't mind sitting for a painting session. And so another question about trying other styles. I'm sorry again that we kind of address that. Um, do you not lose patience when waiting for a painting to dry? What do you do during this free time? Rotate between more paintings. So I'll <laughs> always have paintings in the studio that I can, um, as soon as a painting has become difficult to work on, I just put it aside, pick up the next one. Because I always find it's easier once the um, painting is completely dry to add a new layer to it. I don't like fighting. I don't like, want to spend the time fighting with the painting when I could just be working on something else. I feel like your work is always very serene also. And although sometimes there is an element of drama when you play with that push and that pull of light with the dark background, for instance, and the very ethereal light colored figure. But despite that contrast and that sense of drama, this is still very peaceful and meditative. It doesn't have that aggression that sometimes playing with values or different extremes of color can have. And I think that shows in the fact that you step away instead of fighting with that painting and come back after. Um, let's see, do you have references for your paintings? Um, we spoke about that before. So if you guys rewind back once this is on there. Um, would you ever be interested in doing art for comics? Uh, yeah, I think that would be awesome. <laughs> and you have I think it'd be really, really hard work. Um, those comic artists, I think, work harder than any, any artist. I mean, it's just, it's so much. Um, but I love comics, so. And do you find that that's influenced your work a bit? I mean, I know when you mentioned like the, the frouds and um, Kaniko, those are artists that kind of have that more, I don't know, commercial background with fine art work as well. Were they influential, influential to you when you were younger? Um, and what about the comic oh, yeah. world too? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I would say like the, those, um, I guess the subject matter and the themes. I think that, you know, the art of storytelling, too. I mean, growing up with all these fairy tales and comics and, and movies and cartoons, you have this very stylistic approach to telling a story. And I think with your work and, and many are the artists' works um, working today because they grew up so heavily with that visual culture and that strong sense of narrative and character, it is a very strong aspect of, of what all of you do. Um, let's see, is it harder to work on a small scale um, with respect to the face or big scale faces for you? Um, that's tough. Um, smaller paintings definitely take the same amount of time as larger paintings. And so um, working on a little tiny five by seven versus an eight by 10, it will probably, probably be the same amount of time. Um, I like working small. I find that it does destroy my brushes more quickly because I have to work with a lot of little tiny um, double zero brushes. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't, I guess, I guess it is a little bit more difficult working smaller. I think people forget when they look at pricing and dimensions that it could take the same amount of time, if not more, because it's a little bit, you know, tighter and more tedious in what you have to do as an artist where when you have more space it's, it's a bit more loose and freeing and so that's something to always kind of remember as artists and as collectors when you look at a work it's important to note that detail and the composition and the complexity of the piece as well and so I think yeah thank you guys for all your comments and questions again I think if oh we have one more and then I guess we'll close out have you ever done a family portrait for someone in your own family? Um, 
I've definitely painted a lot of people in my family that have actually shown up in these paintings. Um, and they might be embarrassed if I say which ones. Um, but not, not necessarily the traditional family portrait, but I definitely use my different members of my family as models for my paintings. I think it's awesome because you're using what's familiar to you and something, you know, or someone that you love in addition to your inspirational content too. And I think that it, it makes the process even more organic and natural, which as an artist, I imagine you'd always want. So our mm -hmm. last question, just because it comes from Ben, who was our intern, and I don't want to leave him out, and then we'll, you know, close out. He said, can you explain the basic process for creating a concept or painting when working for a game studio? Um, for example, time, art, direction, reference, etc." Oh, gosh, that's a big question. It is um, a big question. <laughs> <laughs> when you work for... Uh, a client, they always want to see thumbnails. I think coming up with maybe 10 to 20 really, really quick, fast designs that you can show an art director. Um, uh, normally, they'll, they'll pick one of those, and then you end up refining it. And uh, you'll maybe even refine a few different designs for them. And then they'll want to see um, color comps, which is just a really, really rough, uh, something that you can make in Photoshop. Just basically over, overlaying the color over your drawing, just to give a nice, basic idea of what the finished image would look like. And it's a lot of back and forth. Um, but it, it's really, really important, I think, to have an open communication with your art director and a good relationship with them to kind of get an idea of what they're looking for. I think that working with artists like you who have that commercial experience makes my job a lot easier because you're very open to communication and discussing and sharing. And it, it makes my job you know, even more fun. So I, I thank you for that. And I'm grateful for all that experience. Um, last question, because it's quick. Um, someone just asking if the Phantom of the Opera books are still available for purchase. You know, I am not sure. I heard that they were sold out a long time ago, but then somebody told me they were back. And so I'm not sure if they opened up. Um, I signed like 1,200 of them. And so I don't know if they were releasing them in batches or what's going on. But um, you can just go to the Easton Press website and see if they're there. Thank you for that, Annie. And thank you for answering all these great questions. You were really insightful and I think helpful for so many who spent the time coming up with the questions. And yeah, if you guys need anything else, you're always welcome to DM me after or any time in the future. And this is one of the only paintings I think available from Annie. So if you have questions about her or you're interested in talking about payment plans or acquisition opportunities, I'm always here to talk. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. So please don't hesitate. And other than that, say hi to Jess and Annie and stay well. Hi, well. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for your great questions too. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.